So I would love to know, especially because in that release, it says 13 years how did you get involved with how to write colonies and then start photographing them? Sure. Um, I, I work as a photojournalist. Uh, I work full time for the Brandon Sun newspaper here in Brandon. And uh, I do freelance work for a variety of uh, other publications and that. And uh, way back in 2009, um, I had lived in here in Brandon for two years um, was kind of still getting to know the prairies and figuring out where I fit in and that kind of thing and and looking for um, something beyond kind of the daily work that I do for the paper um, but wasn't really sure what that would be um, kind of what kind of projects I wanted to dig into that kind of thing um, but one day for the paper I was out looking for uh, photos just to fill the next day's paper and uh, I drove by Dearborn Colony which is about 20 minutes northwest of Brandon and the women of the colony were out uh, seeding or planting the garden it was uh, kind of early mid-May and uh, so I pulled over and asked if I could make a few photos of them and I really knew nothing about how to write culture um, I'd seen them a few times growing up, like they'd come to my family's garage sales, things like that, but I, I knew nothing about their communities whatsoever. Um, so I spent an afternoon uh, photographing as they planted and chatting with them and learning a little bit about them. Um, and I don't know, just something about that day made me really curious, made me want to go back. Um, so I did, I, I approached the minister and spoke to him about um, kind of whether it would be possible for me to come back. I started reading everything I could about how to write culture and kind of looked for opportunities that might allow for me to come back and get to know the community better. And um, yeah, at, at the time I thought maybe I'd spend a year on this as a long-term project, something like that, and never imagined how involved I would get with it and, and how long it would take to, um, to do the work I've been doing. Yeah, 13 years later. Um, can you explain what a blue zone is and how colonies fit into that? Sure, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to be amazing at explaining it, but um, effectively blue zones are, um, it's a somewhat debated theory of areas uh, in the world um, where certain communities um kind of have all the right qualifications to meet areas where where somewhat subjective things like happiness levels um, and and then overall quality of living and and then something more quantitative such as you know the age that people live to lifespans things like that are measured to be higher against kind of the baseline society and that like that and then the way how to write colonies fit in towards or to those blue zones is, um due to their strong community bonds um with each other their connections to the world around them in terms of how connected their community is how connected their community is to the place where they live um and how connected individuals on the community are to each other and to kind of the 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 greater good of their community right on okay so they fit into those blue zones mostly yeah there i mean and there's you know there's different uh i've heard different anecdotes and read different things about um you know things like depression being less than in say you know north american mainstream society on colonies um and happiness levels being happier and stuff like that and, and that's not to say that colony life is perfect or that um they don't have their issues and, and i'm not saying that you know none of the issues that we struggle with in the outside world don't exist on colonies, but against the ba the baseline of mainstream society, they tend to have stronger communal ties and social ties, which lead to um, kind of a, a higher overall sense of belonging. Right on. I would love to know from your perspective from this project, what are some common misunderstandings or misconceptions about how to rate colonies? Well, I think um, humans, like we are, 
we're very simple creatures in a lot of ways and and we want we want simple explanations for things we all do it it's it's a it's uh like a human nature thing um we we want to fit uh things that we don't understand especially into kind of clean tidy boxes and i see a lot of that in outside portrayals and in misunderstandings of how to write culture and all cultures in general but you know my experiences with how to write cultures is that um we our brains don't do well with complex nuanced narratives so we tend to oh, okay the how to write's well they're they're very simple and quaint and they live, you know, a backwards life that we lived a hundred or 200 years ago and things like that. Um, you know, or there's mistrust of, of their communities because they are apart from our mainstream society and that, um, and, and so there tends to be either a lot of romanticization of their culture, you know, that this is kind of like an ideal outside of mainstream society where they have perfected this, aspect of communal living or there tends to be kind of like uh, denigration and um, sometimes mocking and that 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 their society is backwards or old-fashioned um, and what I've learned and what I try to convey in my work is that their society is extremely complex there are no simple boxes that you can put the, that society in. and honestly I think that's a lesson for any society is that you know, there is nuance, there is um, dichotomies and and complex truths with society that we have to that we have to explore to understand them as best possible. So I think you know people um, they think they're you know that they're just rural farmers um, with very simple lives and that um, and there's all sorts of stereotypes, but, you know, these people run some of the most modern farms in North America, not to mention high tech manufacturing operations uh, and a variety of different businesses and that that, um, you know, range from, you know, simple farmers markets to extremely high tech manufacturing outfits. Wow. Amazing. Um I would love to know, even from your perspective, was there anything when you were doing this where you went, whoa, I would have never thought that, like anything that really caught you by surprise? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, especially in the beginning, I, I mean, in the beginning, I had the same, you know, I, I went into this project not knowing a lot about how to write uh, culture. So, of course, I had my preconceptions or my lack of conceptions. Um, so even that first day when I was in the garden and one of the young women pulled a flip phone out of the pocket in her dress mm -hmm. and took a couple photos of me taking photos. And, you know, to me, that was like, oh, they have cell phones on the colony. I didn't I didn't know that. Uh, and 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 that was kind of like an aha moment right in the beginning that I really knew nothing about their culture and wanted to know more about what's permissible, what technology they use, you know, how their daily lives work out. And, and then throughout um, throughout the project, I think there's been a lot of learning. I wouldn't say great surprises or anything, but but um, I, I just approach you know every encounter under the idea of just trying to learn more and being open to to kind of what being on the colony shows me. Amazing. Um... How have you found, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask anyway, how have you found their faith plays a role in their lives? Yeah, I mean, faith is the overarching, you know, important theme on Colony like that, you know, the their faith is what ties their community together. It's what ties their social bonds together. It, it is at the center of everything they do. It's at the center of their communal aspects. And that, uh, you know, even on the colonies, you know, the, the traditional way the colony is designed is that the church is at the center of the colony and the homes kind of surround it. And, and colonies differ a little bit just depending on their space and their design and that, but, but traditionally that is the design that 
the church is at the center. And I think that's an, an, an important metaphor because that is how colony life is run, is that their faith is at, is at the center of everything they do. That. Um, is, before I forget, sure. your photos that at the very least that were emailed off, stunning, like jaw dropping, amazing. Especially like there's two that really stood out to me, the one with the guy covered in blood. Right, yeah, that one. <laughs> and uh, what? That one can be a little jarring, I think, to to you know city folk, I guess. It, first, I, I gotta ask: Do you want to tell the story behind that one? Yeah, sure. The, I mean, it, it, basically, um, that was during uh, the butchering of their egg-laying chickens at the colony, which happens once a year, um, a, as they replace. Um, you know, they're the stock for the egg layers. And, you know, the, I think at the time the colony had around 11,000 uh, egg laying chickens. So that's a lot to go through to slaughter over two days. Um, and then the chickens are, they're used on the colony, um, you know, for a variety of meals and stuff. But I was there during one of the days taking photos um, while they went through the butchering and the slaughtering. Um, process and you know it's a messy job obviously um so i wanted to i wanted to get a couple portraits that kind of showed that after the day was done and and justin had a messy job that day you know working on the kill floor there and was covered in blood and it just i i think it makes an interesting portrait that sells tells a story it can be a little jarring to um people that and maybe don't think where their food comes from and things like that um, but there is something jarring about that. And the, the first time I ever covered that, you know, when I started this project, I was vegetarian um, and had been for years. And uh, the, the first time I covered any butchering, uh, the minister had said, you know, I had asked if I could photograph it. And he said, you spend the morning helping out and you can spend the afternoon photographing. So... I got a real hands-on experience um, butchering, or I wasn't, you know, I, I was just helping clean the the chickens as they came down the line and that and kind of learning what they did. Um, and then I spent the afternoon photographing and it was an interesting experience. And, and it was great to learn and to see, because I think it's important that we all know, you know, how food gets to our table and where it's coming from. And, and definitely, especially in bigger cities, there's a disconnect with that. Kudos to you for all of that. Yeah, especially being, yeah, a vegetarian. Um, I'll, I would love to touch on the other, if you don't mind, the other favorite photograph of mine with, I don't know if it's a teen girl or a woman, but she's in a dress and she's just covered in mud in the bottom at the very least. Um, I'm going to set up something, but if it's totally different, then just let me know. But like okay, often okay. there might be a, a preconceived notion that it's all work, no play. But this kind of, I think she has a smile on her face. I haven't looked at it like really recently. Yeah. Um, this makes it seem like that might not be the case. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the beautiful things that I love about colony life is that work is play and vice versa. They take their work very seriously, but a lot of work is done communally. And there is that, there's that kind of idea and attitude that even if you're doing a crappy job, you're doing it with friends and you're doing it with family. And there's, there's, there's so much time for laughter and, and just beautiful moments um, that I, I really love about colony life. And there is this kind of this fluid structure between, yes, they're working very hard and work is taken very seriously and, and work is considered, you know, um, very important on how to write communities and children are taught the importance of work from a very young age, but there is a lightness and a, and a, a, a joyousness to it, to most work that, that I love being around. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for this time. Is there anything else that you wanted to say that I may have missed? Um, 
Yeah, the, the only thing I'd add is that I hope that my work adds or acts as kind of a um, a beginning for anyone who might be curious about how to write society. Um, I'm very careful. I don't. I'm not an expert in how to write society. The how to write themselves are the experts. I've been extremely fortunate to be allowed to photograph some of their communities, and I'm grateful. Uh, for everyone who has let me into their lives and the friends that I've made through this. Um, I think that there are some great things um, about their, from their society that we can learn um, in the outside world in terms of the importance of social bonds and community. I, I feel like we are so busy in our lives right now and there's so much division and, and, kind of insulation of our, in our beliefs, in our work, et cetera. And I think it's so important that we, we find uh, common ground with the different groups of people and people we may not agree with and, and remember these important social ties that bind us. That's so good. Well, Tim, your work is incredible and I think speaks for itself. Uh, we'll let everybody know where this is going to be up and how long it runs. And thank you so much for taking the time today. Awesome. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it.